Hello everyone and welcome back to the Psyched YouTube channel. Now this video is a very special one. This is because this week marks the one year anniversary of our channel. During the past 12 months, our channel has grown and developed tremendously and we want to thank each and every one of you for supporting us. In honor of our first year, we are celebrating our anniversary by making a video on how we as people develop in our first year of life. In this video, we will be discussing the various aspects of development and the key milestones that we go through in our first year of life. Before we get started, it is important to note that while the development that we go through in our infancy and early childhood is incredibly interesting, it is also incredibly complex. Therefore, we will only be able to scratch the surface of the various facets of development. If you are interested in learning more about a particular aspect of development that we discuss in this video, you can always let us know in the comments section and we might make a more detailed video about it in the future. With that being said, let's get started. In our first year of life, the development that we go through is very rapid and it is also quite complex. We develop in many different ways and throughout this video, we will discuss some of these different aspects of development. One of the most noticeable aspects of development in our first year of life is the physical development that we go through. In the first 12 months of life, newborns will rapidly grow in size but they will also develop several different physical skills and abilities. Newborns for instance will learn how to crawl and later on how to walk, but they will also learn how to use their hands and fingers to manipulate objects in their environment. While the physical development of infants is continuous, infants often reach certain milestones whereby they have developed certain skills and abilities. It is important to note however that while the age at which infants reach these milestones may differ, there are certain ages at which most infants will have developed certain skills. This applies not only to physical development, but also to other aspects of development as well. When it comes to the development of physical skills and abilities, we can distinguish between two types of skills, gross motor skills and fine motor skills. Gross motor skills refer to skills that use large muscle movements, such as the ability to sit up independently and to crawl. Research focusing on these types of skills has shown that babies make tremendous improvements in their gross motor skills over the course of their first year of life. For instance, already around the age of 6 months do infants learn to roll over on their own when lying down. Shortly thereafter, around the age of 7 months, infants will learn how to sit up independently. Most infants will then learn to crawl and will subsequently take their first steps around the later half of their first year. When it comes to fine motor skills, these refer to skills that use smaller muscles such as the ability to grasp and manipulate objects. In the first few months of life, infants do not have much control over their arms or hands. While a newborn's hands are often tightly clenched, their hands will start to relax and open up around the age of 3 months. At 6 months old, most infants will learn to clasp their hands together and they can usually reach for things with both arms at the same time. At 9 months old, infants are able to bring objects to their mouth and pass things from one hand to the other. Their hands are now open and relaxed most of the time, and they are now able to use their thumb and index finger to pick up small items. Towards the end of their first year of life, most infants are able to let go of objects on purpose and they are able to point at various objects in their surroundings. Beyond the motor skills that arise over the course of our physical development, it is also imperative to discuss the development of our senses. Our first year of infancy is characterized by an intense period of exploration, and this is made possible due to the emergence and development of our senses. Because of the importance of our five senses, we will now take a moment to address the development of each of them. The first sense to develop is our sense of touch. This sense starts to develop very early on. In fact, our sense of touch starts to develop already before we are born. Somatosensory receptors will begin to mature already around the 4th to the 7th week of the pregnancy. Somatosensory function will follow shortly thereafter. Our sense of touch will continue to develop throughout the pregnancy and will also develop after we are born. 
This development is aided by some of our reflexes, like the grasping reflex, but also by the exploration that we engage in as infants. For infants, the world is a new and complex place, and the exploration of our environment in the first years of life allows our sense of touch to fully develop. While the sense of touch is the first sense to develop, our ability to sense smell and taste also develop around the same time. Our primary olfactory receptors, which are sensitive to smell, are present around the 8th week of pregnancy and are mature by the end of the second trimester. Gustatory receptors that are sensitive to the five different tastes begin to develop around the 7th to the 8th week of the pregnancy. These receptors will mature around the middle of the second trimester. Moving on to our sense of vision, research has shown that the eye starts to develop already in the first couple of weeks of pregnancy. Far from fully developed, however, the eyes will continue to develop throughout the pregnancy. By the third trimester, the pupillary dilator muscle will be developed, which marks the onset of light perception. However, our vision at this point is by no means perfect. Our eyes and vision will continue to develop throughout the remainder of the pregnancy and will extend throughout our infancy and early childhood. In the first months of life, our vision is limited to only seeing about 30 to 40 centimeters ahead of us. However, around the age of 4 months, our vision has progressively become more and more focused and we are now able to track objects and people with our gaze. Interestingly, the ability to perceive color is not present at birth. This ability does not develop until the infant is around 3 months old, which means that in the first 3 months of life, the infant's perception of the world is in black and white. At the age of 4 to 8 months, our eyes have become more focused, and thanks to the development of depth perception, we are able to see 3D shapes and to accurately reach out for objects. At 12 months old, the pigmentation of our iris is complete, and our eye color at this point is determined. At the end of our first year of life, our vision is still not perfect, but it will continue to develop for a few more years. Lastly, the sense of hearing also starts to develop before we are born. Our ear starts to develop in the first few weeks of pregnancy, and will continue to do so throughout the remainder of the pregnancy and into our early childhood. Research has shown that fetuses begin to react to sound as early as around 19 weeks into the pregnancy. The first sounds that a fetus is experiencing mainly consist of the mother's voice and other physiological sounds. Throughout the pregnancy, however, the fetus will also eventually be able to hear sounds emanating from the outside environment. However, as the fetus's environment inside the womb is insulated with fluid and layers of tissue, the external sounds that the infant hears are attenuated. This means that the sounds that are generated by the mother, such as her voice, are more intense than the other external sounds. Because fetuses are able to hear their mother's voice during pregnancy, newborn babies already show a preference to their mother's voice at birth. While the fetus is able to hear already in the womb, the sense of hearing is not yet fully developed. The full potential of the auditory system among infants develops during their early infancy. This is thanks to the unattenuated experiencing of sounds consisting of both acoustic and linguistic information. Thus, while the ears themselves are well developed at birth, experience is required for the full potential of auditory perception to be achieved. When discussing the development of our senses, it is also important to discuss the development of the brain. The physical structures that we use to receive sensory input, such as the ears, the eyes, and the nose, are imperative for sensation, but so is the brain. While these bodily structures receive sensory input and relate this information to the brain, it is the brain that ultimately has to process this information in order for perception to take place. During gestation, our brain develops quite a bit, and by the time we are born, the average size of our brain is around 300 to 400 grams. This is about a quarter of the brain size of the average adult, which weighs around 1.2 to 1.5 kilograms. A large proportion of this increase in brain size takes place during the first year of life. By the end of the first year of life, the average brain size of an infant has doubled from what it was at birth. Needless to say, the brain grows at an incredible speed during the first 12 months. Most of this increase in brain size is due to the large number of new connections that are being made in the brain. 
as this period in an infant's life is marked by continuous exploration of their environment, it is no wonder that the brain is growing at this rate. Thus far, we have spent quite a bit of time focusing on the physical development in our first year. However, there are also other aspects of development that we need to mention. For instance, we also develop tremendously in terms of our cognitive capacity. There are various theories that attempt to explain how cognition develops throughout our lifespan. One of the most influential theories on cognitive development was introduced by Jean Piaget. Piaget argued that throughout our childhood, we go through various cognitive developmental stages, which are developmental periods in which certain cognitive skills are achieved. In each of these normative stages, children develop new intellectual abilities and a more complex understanding of the world. At birth, Piaget argued that infants are only aware of the things that are in front of them in their immediate environment. Newborn infants don't yet have a comprehensive understanding of their physical world or about cause and effect. And because they don't yet show goal-oriented behaviors, their exploration of their environment is a process of trial and error. As their physical development continues, infants' ability to interact with their environment will increase, which promotes further cognitive development. As their understanding of the physical world improves, infants will eventually learn concepts such as object permanence. This refers to the knowledge that people and objects still exist even though you can't see them. The object or person in front of me still exists even though I close my eyes. Research on this topic has shown that object permanence may be present in infants as early as around the age of 5 months. While Piaget viewed cognitive development in our childhood as taking place across normative stages, others view it as more continuous. Beyond these theories, there is quite a bit of research that is focused on the cognitive developments that we go through in our first year of life. Complex cognitive abilities, like solving mathematical equations, are clearly not present at this point. However, infants in their first year of life will learn the fundamental cognitive skills that give rise to the more complex cognitive functions that arise later on. An example of this is theory of mind. Theory of mind refers to the ability to attribute mental states to ourselves and to others. It is the knowledge that I am my own person and that the mental states that I have are different from the mental states that you have. While theory of mind is not fully developed until we are around the age of 4, some research suggests that already in our first year of life, do babies develop a simple and rudimentary form of theory of mind. In our first year of life, we develop the ability to understand that other people may engage in goal-oriented behaviors. For instance, some research has shown that at 6 months old, babies who view a human arm reach for an object will interpret this as an intentional agent pursuing a certain goal, i.e. grabbing the object. The baby shows anticipatory behaviors towards the object in question and the infant will get surprised if the arm suddenly changes its trajectory and reaches for a different object. Furthermore, research also shows that one-year-old infants are able to look at their mothers and gauge their expression for reassurance when they are faced with an unfamiliar person or situation. This ability to use social referencing shows that one-year-old infants are able to gauge the mental states of their mothers based on their facial expressions. Other examples of the cognitive development that we go through in a first year includes the ability to recognize familiar faces, to understand the difference between animate and inanimate objects, and the ability to respond to others with various gestures and sounds. Our ability to respond to others with gestures and sounds shows that our social abilities are also developing in our first year of life. The first social relationship that we develop is the one we have with our primary caretakers like our parents. Because infants in their first year of life depend very heavily on their parents to take care of them, the infants will form attachments to their caretakers. These attachment relationships have major consequences for our future social and emotional development. When infants are nurtured and well taken care of, they will experience a sense of stability and predictability in their lives. This will allow them to develop a sense of trust and security that will carry on to future relationships. At birth, 
our capacity for regulating our own emotions is extremely limited. Crying is our only method of communicating with our caretakers. We will therefore cry as a sign that we are hungry, that we want attention, or that we are in need of emotional support. Our social and emotional abilities starts to develop early on in our infancy. Around the age of 2 months, infants will have already learned how to use social smiles in response to their parents when they smile at the infant or use baby talk. As infants are learning to manipulate objects in their environment, infants around the age of 4 months old are also able to show emotions such as happiness and anger. Around the age of 8 months old, infants starts to develop joint attention skills, which refers to the ability to purposefully coordinate one's attention with the attention of someone else. Specifically, infants learn to look in the same direction as their caregivers and to follow their gaze. Lastly, language is another aspect of development that starts already in our first year of life. While we by no means are fully conversational in our first year of life, important milestones in the development of language still takes place. At birth, newborns are able to discriminate among many, if not all, phonetic sounds of the world's languages. This ability is crucial because infants have to learn which phonetic distinctions will be used in their native language that is to be developed. However, starting around the age of 6 to 9 months, infants start showing a preference to the phonetic sounds that are used in the language that they are exposed to. At the same time, their sensitivity to other non-native phonetic sounds will decline. By adulthood, universal phonetic capacity is no longer in place, which means that non-native phonetic discrimination can be very difficult. Around the same time we start showing a preference to a language, we also start babbling with different sounds such as baba or dada. This babbling is the precursor to actual language. While this babbling may easily be interpreted by parents as their infant's first words, the babbling at this age is typically just random syllables strung together. Infants at this age are typically not aware of the linguistic content of what they're saying. It is not until around the end of their first year of life, or a bit later, where infants are now able to purposefully utter their first words. At this point, they may also understand basic words and phrases that are spoken by their parents. Like the other aspects of development that we have discussed in this video, there has been quite a lot of research that has focused on the development of language among infants and young children. One of the more influential thinkers on this topic is the American linguist Noam Chomsky. Chomsky attributed our ability to learn language to an innate ability to understand how language works. While Chomsky acknowledged that native languages obviously are acquired, he argued that the ability to acquire language is made possible because we are genetically encoded with a universal grammar and a basic understanding of how communication is structured. Chomsky supported this position by arguing that the world's languages all share certain basic traits in common. For instance, all languages can be broken down into similar categories such as adjectives, nouns, and verbs. In conclusion, the development we go through in our first year of life is quite fascinating, but it is also quite complex. It is marked by a tremendous amount of physical growth, but also by a great deal of growth over cognitive, socio-emotional, and linguistic domains. Once again, we want to thank you all for supporting us this past year, and we hope that you stick around for another year. If you enjoyed this video, and if you enjoy what we're doing, consider dropping us a like and subscribing to the channel. Don't forget to ring that notification bell, and we'll see you in the next video.